Now that we have created a lot of content inside of the queue list in the first page down here, we would like to make it easily accessible for an end user by creating an action pad. Inside of the action pad, we can design a front end with buttons, faders, informational displays, and background pictures, as well as several pages. Just click onto the edit button in the top left, and you will see the dot matrix in the background, which shows us we are in the edit mode. You can add pages for creating something like a menu. You can delete pages, import pages, export pages, or export all pages. You can also add items. You can delete items or get to their properties. You can cut, copy, and paste items. You can get to the extras menu. You can set the window size or go to kiosk mode, which is the full screen mode. For now, we would like to add an item, a button. The mouse pointer will now be a target and you can drag and drop a button easily. Once you double click the button, you will get to the properties menu. Inside of the properties menu, you can change the caption of the button. As I would like to control the scroll text cueless with this button, I will call it scroll text. You can also change it to any kind of auto text function, which will get, for example, the name of the current queue list, the next or previous queue automatically inside of the caption. Below the auto text button, you can find two images. One image is for the deactivated status and one for the activated status. Let me show you how it works. Clicking onto the image one, you can choose out of the button collection, which you can find on the EQCD. At this point, I would like to tell the user that if he pushes this button, something will play. So I'm choosing the play button image. For image two, I would like to choose something more alarming to tell the user that something is playing already and once he pushes the button again, it will stop. So I will choose the red stop button. Inside the properties on the right side, you can create a tooltip for the button, you can decode the outer text or you can make the button invisible. For example, for using it on a floor plan as a background picture, to have an invisible button to change pages like a menu. You can also set the scripting ID and the font type you would like to use. You can change the horizontal alignment or vertical alignment of the text as well as the text format. It's also possible to make the button an ellipsis and change the background style to rectangle, round, quiz show or none. Inside of the colors options, you can choose which color should be used if you don't use pictures for an active or inactive background, as well as for the active or inactive text. You can also set the margins for the text, setting different pixel amounts going from the left, from the right, from the top or the bottom, and you can change the state control. In most cases, you won't have to change any of the automatic parameters for buttons. Very important, in the second tab of the button, you have to choose which action should be executed. So for example, if you would like to trigger the queue list with the text inside, which is queue list number five, choose the toggle play function to play it once you press it and to stop it if you press it again. Going out of the edit mode and clicking onto the button, will start the scroll text. If you don't see anything inside of the preview window right now, make sure that you have clicked onto the output view option inside of the programmer window. Click the button again and the queue list will stop. 